first, just a couple of things. Would you stretch out your hands to tithes and offerings? <clears throat> Father, I'm so, Lord, I'm so grateful, Lord, to every member of Messiah's, Lord, the faithfulness that is here parallels super large, Father, works in the earth, Lord. Father, I thank you for 100% faithfulness, Lord God, unto you, and Father, therefore, unto Jerina and I, Messiah's church, ability to stay alive in you, in Jesus, your supply. I thank you, Lord. I bless every faithful heart in tithes and offerings, in Jesus' holy name. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to six scriptures at once? Genesis 8.10, Jeremiah 10.13, Colossians 3.12, Hebrews 3.8, and Genesis 8.10 again. We're going somewhere today. If you want to start, in Genesis 8, 10. I'm going to tell you, if you missed Wednesday's teaching time, and let's just stop for a moment. Father, I don't have any wisdom. Lord Jesus, I never do. Lord Holy Spirit, it's always you. Unless you supply, I certainly cannot. So I'm looking to you, leaning on you. Great Lord Holy Spirit. Acknowledging you, Father, in all my ways. Jesus, you formed in me and seated on the throne watching me. In Jesus, your name, oh Lord, at the same time, I love you this morning. Your word this morning, Father. God the Father visited Jerina and I for a year. During which time, he would grab us, take us into the realm of the Spirit, show us what he wanted us to see, speak his scriptures by having references appear before us, our God the Father would audibly speak them. Put us back down, Lord Holy Spirit would then take over teaching us all day long, Jesus out of the scriptures according to the vision or the dream whether open, whether in the body or out of the body, tons of times we never knew. It didn't matter. Then God the Father goes with us now in that sword that is at our belt and adds to what he wants from time to time. And during a visit of a golden book, which is holiness from the Lord, everything is holiness under the Lord, God has rekindled the time of visiting the instructions that he sent. If you missed Wednesday's home group, you need to get a hold of it out on YouTube and our Facebook. And we want to make certain somehow, Scott, that we get this to the established word every time also. If you don't know about that, see me afterwards and I'll explain it to you. Amen. And then there are other things that we want to get out there. But I want to share with you this morning is probably one of the most important topics in days ahead. Now this topic came out of offense. What? You're going to teach on offense? I'm going to teach you how to get past it and how to minister to it. Because God the Father sent a dream. And in the dream, there was someone who was highly. Now, if y'all, how many of y'all have someone you think might be offended at you? Well, chances are, as great as the offense is towards you, in this dream, this couple was more offended at Jerina and I than that. As high as the offense can go, that was the level of their offense. Now, 
I am looking forward. I'm never going to mention their names. They are a real couple. It was a real offense that they believe they have towards Jarena and I. But in truth, they were the offenders. I could not begin to tell you the level of their offense, and I won't, because I've forgiven them a long time ago, and I pray and I hold them up before the Lord that they make it in. But this is the setting that God the Father sent instructions out of his word to, out of this dream of offense, God the Father spoke Genesis 8.10, Jeremiah 10.13, Colossians 3.12, Hebrews 3.8, and Genesis 8.10 again. Now, Genesis 8.10 is this. So he waited yet another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. I want you to watch your holy, heavenly Father prophesy with his word. The level of prophecy that God the Father sent is our now, and it is so powerful there isn't anyone in the body of Christ who should not be receiving this this morning and beyond today. In Jesus' holy name. It is for the hour that we live in. Corona is on the march. The adversary is moving boundaries, grabbing up treasures from all over the earth. No one's chirping or making a sound. The move of the Lord is at hand, and during the final hour of the church on the earth, there are instructions. This morning's instructions are how to handle the offenses that are in the body of Christ, which God the Father does not want in the body. Oh my. So the Lord sent a scripture. So he waited yet another seven days. I want to share with you that everyone who is offended at you is going to go through a full cycle, a seven-day complete cycle, and come right back to the offense where God the Father is going to send the dove to their heart and say, are you ready to forgive now? Are you ready to clear this offense out of my body now? Are you ready to cease being the offended one and start being the forgiving one? Now, this is what God the Father prophesied, that there is a moldings and shapings that comes when we refuse the voice of the Lord to the offense, and we will go seven days, a perfect cycle, that seven days might be 49 years, it might be nine years, it might be three months. But it's the perfect cycle that God the Father has for that person. And they will then come right back around to the offense with God the Father speaking to them, Are you ready now for my dove to light down on your life? Now you've got to understand the dove. The dove is not a carrion crow. It cannot land on a dead body left over from the sharks. During Noah's day, the sharks had a nice meal. They lasted quite a while. Most of it was human. Can you understand? Everybody but Noah was in the water floating dead. And when they sent out the raven, he can land on that dead body and make it. But when they sent out the dove, he had to have a sprig off of an olive tree growing green in a recessed water with the sun shining faithfully over a new season for the earth before he could bring back the sign of life that he found to land on. The Lord Holy Spirit 
came to Jesus with John as a dove. Why didn't he come with refiner's fire? Because Jesus didn't need it. That's for you and I. Pentecost had tongues and fire. We need the fire. Jesus did not need the fire. He was going to move in the dove of peace. He was going to bring supernatural shalom peace to every situation. And the Lord is saying that he wants to bring peace in the body to the offenses that are in the body. And he wants to clear these out because it's the time for the remnant army bride to arise. It's the time for the bride to get rid of the spot and the wrinkle and the blemish. They are not allowed. In our comfortable Christianity, we think we have plenty of time to deal with it. And one day I might take a look at this, God. Only the Lord is saying, I'm sending the dove now. Let him find the life of Jesus in you to light on. Let him find Jesus inside of your heart and let the dove light. Let him find life to rest down on. I love to watch Betty when I'm ministering. Y'all can have fun with this now. Betty is always interceding for me when I'm ministering. And if you want to go by discernment, Angie does too, but Betty's the worst at it. And Betty's over there saying, Lord, please don't let him move in offense. Lord, please don't let him offend everybody. Lord, please don't let him be too hard. Lord, please give him gracious speech. Lord, Lord, Lord. Help him, help him, help him. And guess what? It works. <laughs> Bless the Lord. So then, there's a redemption season ahead. Hear the prophetic word of the Lord. You're going to hear more prophetic out of me than you've ever heard it before because it's time. We have shifted gears now. It's time. There is a prophetic season of the Lord that is redemptive in nature ahead. And the dove of the Lord is going to light on the heart and say, let me in and make peace with your offense through forgiveness. Forgive those who have offended you. Well, Lord, you just don't understand. They really did offend me. Yes, and you are offending me by holding on to your offense, which I want out of the body of Christ, and I am knocking at your door right now, saying to you, get rid of this offense in my sight. Forgive, lest you stand before me one day, having not forgiven, and I will not forgive you. This is the seriousness of offense in the body of Christ. So then, if you can understand there's a season, if you miss that season, you go into a moldings and shapings, a circumstantial spankings time that goes seven, a cycle of fullness, seven somethings, until God the Father has softened you up with the blows of life a little bit, and he then revisits you again and says, are you ready now to forgive? And if you do not forgive, then another cycle of seven. And he will come again and say, are you ready now to forgive? And if you do not forgive, he comes with another cycle of seven and says, are you ready now to forgive? But know this. God the Father will not allow offenses to stand we must move in the forgiveness that Jesus has heart to heart, spirit to spirit, soul to soul as an army of God in the last day. Amen. This is not play church time. This is not sweep it under the rug time. Now you can do that. I'll just watch you get spanked for seven cycles. I'll watch you not grow in anything for seven cycles. I'll watch you try to put on the armor and have it fall off and chop one of your toes off. 
Can you hear what I'm telling you? How can you lose step in the No, you can't. Why? Because you have something in the heart the armor won't cover. You must get rid of offenses. So then the next scripture. What did the Lord say? Oh, God the Father so faithful. Jeremiah 10, 13. When he utters his voice, there's a tumult of waters in the heavens. And he causes the clouds to ascend from the end of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain and brings out the wind from his storehouses again. Watch Yahweh, Yehovah, prophesy to the church in the earth with his word of Jesus. You can just take the first, if we only had the one-third top of that verse, when he utters his voice, there's a tumult of waters in the heavens. God the Father comes to the heart, knocks on it, and says, let Jesus and I in, and let us sup with you, and let us tell you how to clear this offense out of my body that I'm preparing for my son. I don't like it. I want it gone. I'm serious about it. I'm knocking on the door of your heart. Pay attention. Listen up. Now, we can harden our hearts. Oh, my, you don't want to do that. Why? Because as God the Father is speaking by his voice to the heart, there is a tumult in the heavens. God the Father's waters are preparing to come to you to wash you and to cleanse you and to make you whole. And you don't want to turn away from that blessing. You want to let the Lord have his way in your way. You want a Lord that has his will where yours is. That's the only time he is Lord. So then, when he utters his voice, there's a tumult of waters in the heavens. Imagine the angels grabbing a hold of the river that comes underneath the throne and bringing it down to someone who's in an offense. Oh my, the healing level in that river for that person. Wow. Okay, get them gone. And he causes the clouds to ascend from the end of the earth. There's a move of glory coming. The clouds are going to gather, and they're going to park over those who are hungry. From the ends of the earth, the cloud of glory will gather in the coming moon. And God the Father wants you who are offended to be included in the pour of glory. This is what's prepared for you. This is what you would turn away from if you do not say yes to the Lord and clear the offense in your heart. Oh my. He makes lightning for the rain. Lightnings are the suddenlies of God. I love Brother David, Brother David Hogan. I love Brother David because you wouldn't know it unless you knew it, but I know it. Brother David goes where death is imminent, almost as it were promised. In other words, if he goes into that situation, he's going to die. Death awaits. And he says to the Lord, shall I go? And the Lord says, go. So he's going to his death unless the lightning, the suddenness of the Lord show up. And he bargains in his covenant with God, if it's not my time, you're going to move when I get there. Death is going to get defeated. Jesus is going to be glorified. Your fatherly will is going to be done in the earth. I'm going. For someone who is offended, there's a suddenly from God. There's a lightning for you. There's a moment where you suddenly begin to get past everything you could never get past, and your life changes forever because of the suddenlies of God, because of the touch of heaven upon your heart. Oh my, I don't want to ever miss a single lightning from the Lord. I want to stand up under every suddenly. How about you? I don't want to miss anything 
that God the Father has planned. Now he doesn't quit there. Lord Holy Spirit has instructions to bring out the wind from the wind storehouse. The wind of the Spirit will blow and you will see the effects of where it went and you will step in and follow and step in to the power and the dominion and the glory and the authority of the Lord God Almighty in the coming days. If you will get rid of your offense. I hear the Lord say it. It's not an easy word. But I'm going to say it just like I hear it. How dare you hold on to your offense? Who do you think you are telling Jesus' blood you will not forgive and yet claiming to know him? How dare you hold on to that offense? And if you're offended by what I just said, guess what? You're going to get molded in shape for a cycle of seven. Then you come right back to this point and decide to forgive. Forgiveness is the mark of Jesus in the earth. It's what we can do that Israel can't do. That's the point of walking with the Lord. Be like him. Function as he functions. Do what he does. Do it his way, which is always the Father's way. For God so loved the world that he gave. That was why we were yet sinners. If I forgive you of all of this, why can you not forgive another of what they have done? You are forgiven by that great grace. Now use that grace and forgive everybody else. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Betty, keep praying for me that I don't miss it. I like to see Betty with her hands over her eyes. Oh, Father, don't let him miss it, Lord. Get him, Lord. The next verse from the Lord. Are y'all catching a glimpse of how God the Father is able to take his word and prophesy anything he wishes? It's off every chart. I tell you, it's awesome beyond every glimpse of the Lord I've ever had. Now here's the instructions. And yes, you've got to forgive everybody in your past. All your ex-husbands, all your ex-wives, all your ex-friends. Yes, forgive every single one of them. Quit grinding away, thinking you're going to get past it, you're not. Hallelujah. Forgive. Amen. Colossians 3, 12. Oh my. Now here's the instructions for those who are offended at you when God the Father brings you into their presence and brings them by your path. Are you ready? So as those who have been chosen of God. <coughs> if God the Father has brought them full circle and the dove has lighted down upon their heart and is speaking to them let the dove in. Let the dove of peace rule and reign. Make peace with your adversary while you're in the way, lest you come before the judge, and he will not release it. There are warnings in Scripture about this, and we want to take heed to the Word of God. So as those who have been chosen of God, you've been chosen to serve the very first person, the very last person, everyone in between who's offended at you, and you've been chosen to serve them. You're chosen of God to help them get past the offense that they think you were guilty of, which they are guilty of. And you've been chosen of God to get them past that offense. What a selection process of heaven. Oh, my holy. Now why would you have to be holy? Because you are speaking for God the Father when you open your mouth. And as you open your mouth in holiness, they see God the Father holy towards them. Holy. And beloved 
Why would you have to know that you are his beloved and not move in any pride in it? There's this truth about the prophetic. And the church has got to come full circle. It says, and we've misused it so much, I hope I can get through this short explanation. I hope it, become, hope it doesn't become too long. That if you give to a prophet in the name of a prophet, that in the name of a prophet does not mean this. I am the prophet of the most high God, and I say to you now, give a thousand dollars, get in the healing line, and give a thousand dollars to death. That is not the name of the prophet. What that is, is a complete miss of the scriptures. If Elijah was moving in the name of a prophet, and he did, what name did he move in? Yahweh has sent me to you. I come in his name because you are his favorite daughter. His eye is upon you, O widow of Zarephath. All of Israel has not bowed before him, but you have bowed before him and you have honored him. And because I have a prophet supply that cannot dwindle, cannot be diminished in the midst of a famine, God the Father has decided that his love for you is equal to the love that he has for me. And he has sent me as his servant to you because you are honored in the sight of God Almighty. Now you're coming in the name. So then... You're beloved. And you've got to know that because the offended and people offended, they've got like a wall around their city. And they don't let anybody in, including God. And now he's ordered them to the dove of peace and he sent them to you whom they are offended at and he's wanting you to know that the same way he loves you, he loves them. And he's wanting them to go free. And he's chosen you to serve them. Like Elijah served the widow of Zarephath, you, you are to serve those who are offended at you. Oh my, that is not easy. Of course not. Put on a heart of compassion. Why have you got to put on a heart of compassion? It's because they've got to sense his compassion for them in the midst of their hurt. They're hurt. And they don't know how to get out. But God the Father has timed it. And they don't understand it. But he's made them come full circle back to the thing that they've not been wanting to face, not been wanting to deal with. And he's made it come alive now to them. And they're sitting in that hurt, and God wants to get them past that, and he's got to have you move in compassion for their hurt. They might be guilty of everything you think, but they are sheep led to the slaughter and God wants to rescue them so you've got to move in his compassion his kindness has got to navigate their first steps of emotionally being able to face this his humility has got to diffuse their pride. You've got to move in humility because they're locked down in pride. What do you mean locked down in pride? I was right, they were wrong, and God's going to be on my side, and God's going to show them. That's pride. Humble yourself. Don't be foolish. God never moves with pride or for pride. Humble yourself before the Lord. Gentleness, 
They're going to have to take fumbling, faltering steps. First forgiveness, then cleansing, then steps of spiritual trust towards recovery that include a strengthening of what was weak, and there's just no telling how long that's going to take. After all, they have been holding on to sin in the heart for seven periods of God's cycle. Seven periods ago, God spoke, and they said no. And now they're right back to the offense, and God is saying, will you now deal with this offense in my body? It's a fearsome thing that they are at. And you were the chosen vessel. In the move of the Lord, we probably will spend the first year working with people who are offended. Get ready. Get ready. This is going to be a wild ride. And you won't be able to work with anybody if you are offended. People will be having to work with you when you need to be working with people. Come on, saints. Get a hold of what God has prophesied. Thus saith the Lord. This is the strongest prophecy from the Lord to date that I know of. And we have just begun to enter into it. This is only the third prophetic word from the Lord. And there are a thousand to go. All of them instructions for the outpour of all outpours. What to do in the midst of what God is doing. So then, finally patience. Because they might not get past this thing in a day. They might forgive you, say yes, go through the motions, and then come back tomorrow and say, uh, I remembered something else. I'm still offended at you, and I need you to talk. I need to talk to you about my offense towards you. So there's like facets on a diamond. Okay, I got past being offended at you yesterday, but now I'm offended again when I think about this, and I think you need to ask me to forgive you. Okay, here we go again. Patience. We were fellowshipping last night with a couple and we got to a subject of servant and I shared the test of a servant. So I'm going to put it out there for the body of Christ. The test of a servant is when, if you remain a servant, when someone treats you like one. Oh my. Because we have this idea of our importance sometimes. And we go in to serve someone, and they flat do not appreciate it, don't want it. It's like casting pearls before swine. They turn to rend us, and hopefully we step out of the way of the wren. And yet God sent us in as servants to that very situation just so they could one day hear him say to them, you know, you really weren't acting like Jesus today, were you? Uh, well, they deserved it, God, but you deserve a few things too, and I haven't given it to you, have I? See, Lord Holy Spirit is the Lord of this thing. He's the dove that's going to go visit. He's the master builder for God the Father. He's not going to skip any building blocks. We don't have to be the judge. We've got to be the servant. God's going to get this thing done. Will he leave some behind? Probably. Prophetically, I just know that there will be some who will face him in the judgment, having let the sure word of the Lord come to their feet and let it stay idle. They never moved in it. They never stepped in it. They never said yes to Lord Holy Spirit. They pushed it under the rug, waited another day, and eternity came and caught them unawares. I don't want to be there with anything in my heart other than, Lord, I told the Lord a long time ago, on judgment day, no matter what he does through our life, no matter how far or high or wide or deep it goes, I'll never be able to say anything to the Lord except that I was willing. And I'm not so certain about that. I'm not so certain that he didn't help me with my willingness beyond what I knew. 
And then it wasn't actually me being willing, but Jesus inside of me helping me to be willing. Because there's nothing, there's nothing that we can say to the Lord. He does it all. The power in Jesus' name accomplishes it all. He is the one. So much so that when the elders with a crown on their head perceive this, they take that crown off and they cast it down on the glassy sea before the Lord Jesus. King of kings, Lord of lords, God forever himself. You can think of Yahweh's son, fully grown up. Got the father's position now. God the Father's going to give him heaven and earth. Oh my. Sit here at my right hand, son, until I make your enemies your footstool. But once I make your enemies your footstool, a place where everything you walked out can come to rest. The earth is going to be a place where what you live will have a rest for it. There'll no longer be a striving, no longer be a contending for what you lived out before me. It'll rest before you and who you are. At that point, I'm giving you the left hand side of the throne too. It's all yours, son. Oh my. I want to stand before the Lord pure and clean and holy by him, by the blood. So then, the next verse, Hebrews 3 and 8. This is the warning shot. This is the shot across the bow. Do not harden your hearts. I hear it again. I'm going to say it in such a way, if you're offended, you're going to get offended more. I'm not trying to offend you. I'm trying to rescue you. But I hear the Lord putting it forth, and I want you to hear this. How dare you harden your heart when God is speaking to you? How dare you be that arrogant to harden your heart when God is speaking to you? Clear this offense out of your heart. Do business with the king who is speaking to you. Do not harden your heart. All you have to do to begin to harden your heart is begin to resist Lord, Holy Spirit, the dove of peace that is speaking right now to your heart. If you resist him, you went down the path of hardening that heart. Do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. I know everybody thinks God doesn't have a left hand, but he does. When they provoked me, as in the day of trial in the wilderness. Now notice some wisdom of revelation from God the Father. They weren't in the wilderness. They were in the trial of the wilderness. They weren't in the wilderness to get through it. That was an 11-day journey. 11 days to get through the wilderness. They were in the trial of the wilderness to see if they could get the wilderness out of them so that they could go possess the promised ground. Offenses are part of the wilderness. You've got to get Egypt out of the heart in the wilderness. You've got to learn God the Father in the wilderness. This is not an hour for the namby-pamby word to come to the body of Christ Jesus. This is an hour where it's either in, all in, or out. Choose you this day. Do not harden your heart. Now I know everybody thought that I should say it this way. Beloved, as you are listening to the voice of Lord Holy Spirit whispering the love of Jesus to you, don't harden your heart today. Don't harden your heart today. Say yes to Jesus. Say yes. Come into the fold. Come into the ark of safety. Come on board. 
Rubbish. You are an offense to God if you are offended and will not forgive. Get rid of it while you can. You are not in the plan of God. You are not in the purpose of God. You're not walking with Lord Holy Spirit. You're not going to move in sign. You're not going to move in wonder. You're not going to move in miracle. You're not going to do exploits. Why? Because your heart cannot fathom who God is. He is the great forgiver. And he has forgiven you and put you in the body and called you born again. Now live it. I think I'm wondering if the Lord called me to offend all the offenders this morning. I hope not. I'm doing my best to deliver the word of the Lord as I hear it. But I got to tell you, there's a lot of people offended in the body. and They've been holding on to it for a long time. Guess what? God the Father's got a plan. He's coming to visit you at your heart. Let the dove of peace light. Let him find the life of Jesus to find a spot in you that he can land on. Amen. Yes. Don't let him return to that ark minus your heart saying yes. Let him bring a dove offering back from you to the ark. And now Genesis 8 and 10 again. Only God can prophesy this way. Man can't figure this stuff out. Where could you go to have this much fun? You just can't invent this stuff. So he waited yet another seven days. And again, he sent out the dove from the ark. How many of us have ever been miserable in a something trying to figure out how to get past it. Now, how would you like for God to say, I came to you, but you didn't quite perceive what I wanted, so I'm going to take you on another journey of seven. What? Well, you weren't listening to me while I was speaking to you out of the love that I have for you. You're my beloved and I love you. But you've got to do it my way. You've got to let Jesus rule and reign as Lord over your life. And I spoke to you and you said no. I didn't say no, God. I just didn't say yes. When I speak, there's only one answer. Yes, sir. I spoke and you resisted. When you resisted, I looked down the timeline of your life and knew that you were going to resist every single offering of goodness that I would have for you for the next seven years. So I'm going to put you in the wilderness again for seven more years. And I am going to spank your butt for seven years till you figure out that I am God. And I am speaking to you that you must clear the hurdle of offense that is inside of you. Eternity does not await your offense. It is not coming in. Oh my. Now when we get a hold of that, maybe we get a hold of the truth. Because that lines up with scripture. We can't fathom God the Father saying to us, I told you to forgive because I forgave you. But if you do not forgive, neither do I forgive you. Oh my. There is a cycle in the move of the Lord to come where God the Father is going to visit offense. And he's going to say to everyone offended, my dove wants to light down. He can't land on what is dead. You've been dead for seven years to my voice. I'm speaking to you now, let me light. I'm sending the dove of peace to you now. Let me in. Let him bring back an olive twig off of your life back to my throne. 
and I will bless you. I will get you past every offense. I will cause you to grow and see and hear and do what you have longed for, but you must obey me. That was the word of the Lord sent. I just want to live it and every other word that God sends. I said to the Lord a long time ago, I hope you're with me. Lord, I don't care what mountain top I'm on. You know, I see that next mountain, it's higher. Yeah, I see the valley. I know I gotta go through some stuff to get to that mountain, but I don't care. That mountain's higher than the one I'm on. I want it all, Lord. Let me go to that mountain. I'm going off of this blessing down into the valley of trials. I'm going to the other side. I'm going to make it to the next mountain top and the next mountain top and the next mountain top because I want all of you, God. If you're in it, I want it. That's the heart of the remnant. So then, beloved, this message is yours today, yes, but it's the bodies from God the Father. When God the Father sent this, I'm not shy about this. I've held back for a long time. I'm no longer holding back. It is what it is. When God the Father sent this, within the first month, Within the first couple of weeks, I asked the Lord, Lord, what are you sending? I mean, you've got to understand, getting grabbed up by God the Father every morning and going on to heaven's ground, and then having scripture references hover in front of you, and having either me or Jarena scribe down below as a team, writing down the scriptures, writing down the vision, all the details, and then writing down the scripture references, and then having the Lord Holy Spirit take over from morning to night teaching you Jesus and understanding that this is out of God the Father's war room. This is out of the plans of God. This is out of the purposes of God. This is out of the revelations of Jesus and Scripture like I've never seen it before because God the Father is His Word. He can use it any way He wants and He's using it to prophesy His will. This is what His will wants. He wants all offense gone out of the body, and He's telling us how to do it. Okay, we're going to do it. Who would say no to God? Not me. I have too much fear of the Lord to ever say no to God the Father. No, I will not ever do that. If you're that brave, I'll just watch you get spanked for seven years. And don't think I won't privately laugh. I'll try not. I have a friend in Africa, and they took in this large snake. And he advised the couple, don't take that snake in. And they didn't listen. And they put that snake in their house. One day that snake had a big bulge. They had just had a baby, and that snake had eaten that baby. And my friend laughed, hilarious with something. You say, what a sense of humor. No, God spoke to them, and they didn't listen. So if you carry an offense and you don't listen, I probably am going to chuckle when I see you getting spanked because I know it's for your good. I know you got quite an endurance run of a sudden to get back to the place where God's willing to speak to you again. But you might want to get serious about getting rid of any offense. So then... If I have jarred you, shaken you, upset you, let's just go do the will of God and get rid of the offense, shall we? Because what I've really been upsetting is the demon of unforgiveness that's plaguing your life. The demon that circles around you and constantly feeds your bitterness out of your unforgiveness that causes havoc in everything you say or do or go or are about. You do not want to be offended. So then, would everyone just stand with me for a moment? The 
Elijah and Isaiah are standing. Amen. <laughs> so would everyone take a seat? I just wanted to get you to obey me. You say, Seymour, that offends me. Okay, there you go. Ask the Lord to forgive you of that. Now, let's go before the Lord, Holy Spirit, everyone out in television world, camera world. Would you just grab a hold of your spiritual center? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Would you just grab a hold, place your hands on your belly if you need to? Would you just grab a hold of your spirit, man? As you get more mature in this process, there will be a link that will hook up to your mind and go back down to your belly. Hook up to your mind with the mind of Christ and go back down to your belly where your spirit man is. Jesus lives inside of you and he is the great forgiver. And I'm not saying that it is easy. But I am saying that Lord Holy Spirit is the teacher. He's the guide. He's the comforter. He's the friend. He's the warlord, and he knows how to do what we cannot do in Jesus. So I just want you to look to Lord Holy Spirit to reveal to you and your inner man some offense. It might be someone towards you. It might be you towards someone. It doesn't matter. Works the same way. It's an offense. The Lord Holy Spirit has shown you that, and I know his faithfulness. It didn't take him long to do it. Up under the inspiration of Jesus being spoken out of the word, forgot the Father's will this morning, Lord Holy Spirit's already shown you, maybe all during the message. And now you've got that person or person in mind. I want you to ask Jesus, the great forgiver, who lives inside of you to be Lord to that situation and flow through you using your voice but flowing through you to that situation and say with Jesus Lord Jesus I forgive if they offended you you forgive them of the offense you're coming out of the prison. They might still be in it because they don't know you're praying this prayer, but you want to get yourself out of your prison. You want to go free. You don't want to carry the offense with God the Father watching your heart. So as you say yes to Jesus flowing inside of you, I want you to see Jesus making a great exchange. God the Father's will coming where your will was. His will in you now, in this area. The heart of the Lord towards that person beginning to come as an understanding because you're first realizing, perhaps, for the first time that God the Father loves them just as much as he loves you. And then the mind of Christ from this moment on, having made the great exchange, you want to begin to think with the Lord, with the mind of Christ towards them. You want to refuse the story of the offense. From this moment on, Jesus inside of you has forgiven it. Therefore, it is gone in Jesus' holy name. If you're out in the television audience, send us a note that says, I sensed it go. I sensed it lift. Now I want you to do something. We want to kind of just lift your eyes to me just for a moment, if you would. I just want to make a break from that place that you were just at because I want you to revisit it. 
So if you'll just close your eyes again and go back in that very place that you were just at in the spirit. Can you sense the shalom, the peace of Almighty God in that area? Seven years, here we come. The peace of the Lord in that area. In Jesus' holy name. Because if you do, you made the great exchange. The offense is gone. Now, if you will say, Lord, Holy Spirit, any and every offense inside of me, I want you to bring. I want you to take me on a journey of clearing all offenses out of me. And I choose to forgive in Jesus. I will not carry an offense. Lord, if I offend someone, I don't mean to. I didn't purpose it. And Lord, if they have carried an offense towards me, Lord, I forgive them in Jesus' name. And let Lord Holy Spirit work with you for a season until you know that there's nothing inside of you that is not forgiven in Jesus' holy name. Thank you guys for coming today. Thank you guys for being the church. There's an announcement coming forth. I hope to see you at Passover. If you're going to make it at Passover, please let me know. Kind of a heads up a little bit. Because we've got to buy five pounds of lamb for every person. This is a prayer for those that don't quite know the Lord and maybe never have met Him. He works better on the inside than He does on the outside. So let's ask Him to come into our hearts greater and deeper and wider. Lord, I don't know You, but I want to know You, Lord. And Lord, I ask You to come inside my heart, to dwell with me, to live with me, Lord. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins, all of my shortcomings, everything I didn't know, Lord. I just ask you to cleanse me from it. Come into my heart, Lord. Come dwell with me. I want to be a part of your kingdom. Lord, I don't know what to do or how to do it, but here is my voice lifting it up to you, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to come in. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all iniquity. Come into my heart, Lord. I want to be your friend, and I want you to be my friend. Come in, Lord Jesus. Now, if you prayed this prayer today, the Lord just heard your voice. He hears the weakest call, the weakest heart. He has come into your heart. Seek for a local church. Continue to pray, and He will lead you. God bless you. Jesus loves you.